Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for your online coffee break. I'm so thrilled to introduce today's special guest, Cindy Blackman Santana. Cindy is a virtuoso drummer whose artistry spans the realms of jazz and rock. As a band leader and as a musician, Cindy is a sound innovator with a passion for pushing creative boundaries and exploring movement and change. She's about to release her new album, Give the Drummer Song, a 17-song eclectic mixture of old-school funk and radio-friendly rock and pop combined with rock and jazz instrumentals. At Why Hunger, we don't just ask why. We find solutions to hunger that transform, last, and tackle urgent human needs. Nutritious food is a human right, and hunger is solvable. That's why we work with grassroots organizations and social movements across the globe to ensure everyone has access to nutritious food in efforts to end hunger for good. For more information, visit www.whyhunger.org. Online Coffee Break. Cindy, now, I have to admit, you have this awesome new album, Give the Drummer Some, and I have to admit, whenever I just listen to you play, the way you play the drums is just, to me, it's it's just mesmerizing, and your music is so awesome, and, and I just, I want to go back to, back a little bit before we talk about your album, and, and I understand that you were born in Yellow Springs, Ohio, which I think is really cool, because I actually uh, lived in Dayton for a few years, so I went to Yellow Springs several times, beautiful, beautiful city. But that's where I understand that you f- were first introduced to the drums. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, definitely. Yellow Springs is just a unique little place. It's, it's, it's um, a very creative community and very teeny. Yeah. Um, when I was there, the population was 3,000. Wow. And, yeah, it's not yeah. called a city or a town. It's called a large village. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's very small, but... You know, the good thing is that um, it's such a creative little space, mm-hmm. um, and there's a lot of, there were a lot of musicians there, there were a lot of artists there, you know, um, now there are a lot of people doing yoga there, and still a lot of artists and, and, you know, comedians, just people in the arts gravitate to that spot, so, yes. you know, it was a wonderful atmosphere to, to grow up in, you know, and... Um, I just gravitated uh, to the drums right away. I mean, you know, when I was very young, um, I could single out the, the, the drums in the music that I was hearing or the percussion in the music that I was hearing, and I was always attracted to that sound and to the role that that instrument played in in the music. So I started asking my parents for, for drums very, very early on. Uh, by the time I was seven, I got a toy drum kit wow. and it progressed from there in terms of the level of drum kits that I got and you know my uh playing and you know getting into the drums but that's certainly where it, where it started in Yellow Springs absolutely See I think it's neat and then I heard that you sort of I, I guess you were influenced early on into into jazz you know, you know Max Roach was one of your influences drummer Tony Williams who, who else influenced you Um Art Blakey is a huge influence on me. Um, he's like everybody's daddy, anyway, <laughs> you know, and he certainly, <laughs> certainly is 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 mine um, as well. Um, he uh, took me in too, you know, really? as as a as a young drummer and friend, and called me his daughter, you know. So I got a chance to hang out with him wow. all the I babysat for his children, so I was at his house, you know a lot, you know, uh, so we, we had a, a, a great, you know, like uh father daughter kind of relationship, you know, very healthy, very inspiring, very encouraging. Uh, Cause he was that to all the young musicians and wow. certainly to me, um, Elvin Jones, big influence on me. Um, uh, Philly Joe Jones, um, Roy Haynes, oh, wow. um, Lewis Hayes, uh, Jimmy Cobb, um, you know, all the, all the, the, the great cats, you yeah. know, I, I just, I loved him. Um, Buddy Rich, I, I, I loved his hands and his, you know, attitude, 
behind the drum kit, um, like just no fear attitude. Um, and I, I was fortunate enough to meet several of, of my heroes, uh, even Papa Joe and, and Kenny Clark, you know. Really? Wow. Um, yeah, got a chance to, to, to meet them, talk to Kenny Clark. Um, oh he saw me sit in, actually, at Sweet Basil's. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, and I didn't know that he was there. He introduced himself to me, and I was like, oh, oh, oh Kenny Clark is there. Are you kidding me? That is so you know? amazing. Just you see these, yeah, these legends was, that influence you. I think that's so incredible. It was awesome. And then I, I was befriended by a lot of other great drummers too like al foster you know we became really great friends oh, wow. um and for a period there we were you know when i was in new york we were talking on the phone almost every day and we talked about three individuals um sonny rollins mm-hmm. miles davis and tony williams <laughs> those were the topics of our conversation uh, every single time we spoke, you know, and then of course sometimes we we would talk about Art Blakey and different people, but you know those three people were the the main topic of of every conversation that w- that we had. So that was amazing. Billy Hart, you know, another cat. Yeah. Of course, the great Lewis Hayes, uh, Ed Blackwell, Billy Higgins. You know, all these cats are influences, and 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 most of them I was fortunate enough to meet, and and some of them get to know quite well. Oh, Sydney, I think that's incredible. And I, I do want to talk about just all these influences, how you know that sort of led to this amazing new album, Give the Drummer Some. And I love the title. I understand that you know, it sort of influenced way back to James Brown, which is awesome. And But what I like is from all the tracks I've heard, you know, you've got this great mix of tracks. They're full of energy. You know, some tracks have, you know, very powerful messages and others are just plain fun. But I love the common theme that I've heard you discuss about this album, you know, sort of love, unity, compassion, and divinity. Can you tell us more about that? Oh, yeah. I'm glad you asked about that because sure. that is the the uh, binding element and quality that exists through every single piece, yes. you know, every single note, every single space, um, because that's what we're, that's what we're made of. You know, we're made of love. We're made from the essence of of the creator's mind which is full of only love mm-hmm. um and so that is something that i want to uh help people remember we all know it but we forget it and then we cloud uh our our memory cells with things that are you know um <laughs> made up by our our our, our imaginations you know yeah. um and and the thing is that thoughts are things you know you create things through thought so when we think of of crazy kooky and negative things they eventually if not right away they turn into physical uh realities right so just as well as we can turn um, a negative thought into a reality. We can turn a loving, positive thought into a reality as well. Absolutely, I, I love that, and, and I love it. I guess it's sort of. I'm thinking back to the one of the first tracks you have in your song. One of the first songs you released was the new cover of the classic John Lennon song "Imagine." Um, but of course, this time you and Carlos, uh, your husband, did an amazing rendition. I was going to ask you what led you to pick that song to do as a cover. Um, I was in the studio with, with Narda, uh, who produced seven of yeah. our vocal tracks, and uh, Narda Michael Walden. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, because everything that we were doing, um, they were all, all the tracks we did were original. And he said, um, if you were to do a cover, which cover would it be? And that was the first choice. <laughs> wow. um, because I just, I've, I've always been drawn to that song because of the beautiful message the simplicity of the melody and John's delivery of it and, you know, just the poignancy of the whole vibration of that song. And um, it's just a timeless bit of energy, you know, of light that um, John Lennon and, and Yoko gave to us. And so um, that's, that's the reason that I wanted to do that song. See, I think it's amazing. I even heard that uh, Yoko, <laughs> you got a thumbs up from, from her, so that had to be just amazing to get her sort of approval on that. Oh, my goodness. That was just, oh, so supreme. We are so grateful because, 
you know, um, I'm sure she gets <laughs> thousands or more, yeah. you know, <laughs> renditions of, of John's songs, and especially that one. It's, it's such a popular song. Um, and so for her to to love what we did is really a compliment and also, you know, a confirmation that we're on the right track delivering this message and, and delivering, it, delivering it in a way that brings the, uh, not only brings the message to the forefront and the attention again mm-hmm. of people, um, but it also delivers it in a way uh, that brings it into a modern, more modern space in terms of the way that we performed it. And, you know, I love that she was okay with the originality that we put into that song in terms of, you know, the, the drum groove and, you know, the, the, the phrasing of the vocals and, you know, the things that we added, uh, the incredible guitar solo that, that Carlos played, oh, it's you so know, good, yeah. um, the little vamp at the end, and she mm-hmm. was okay with all of that and, and, and the ad-libs. And so, you know, it's just... It's so much a joy to know that that she she loves the track, um, and and we love it. So you know, I'm, I'm I couldn't be happier with that. And I love it too. We all love it. It is fantastic. But you've also got some. <laughs> uh, you. Obviously, you know, you, uh, that was the only cover. All the rest are originals, and they're fantastic. A um, couple of I just want to point out. You know, you have this wonderful one. I love the groove of "She's Got It Going On." I, I think that is just a <laughs> fantastic song. I love that. And also, everybody's dancing. Uh, that's featuring Carlos, and I, I, what I, I think is really cool is that you've had you know Carlos help with eight songs on this album. You know, seventeen songs total. You have two songs with John McLaughlin. You've got three songs with Vernon Reed, one song with Kurt Hammett, and as you mentioned, you have multiple tracks produced by Grammy Award winning Narada Michael Walden, which I think is incredible. But you also have some songs that have some special meaning, uh, such as Mother Earth and Social Justice. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yes, yes. Thanks for asking about those songs as well. Sure. Um, Because that was another thing, again, you know, and I'll just reiterate, to put messages on this record. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mother Earth is is a tribute to um, this beautiful planet that we live on and and all that that she gives us. You know, um, we suckle from her, and, you know, she just asks in return that we love her. And we don't always do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so we, we, need to, we need to love her. And one thing that we saw in this uh, pandemic lockdown was that she started to regenerate herself. Yeah. Look at the waters of Venice. They became clean. I mean, that's incredible. I've been to Venice dozens of times, and mm. the water is funky. You know, the city is incredible. I love Venice, but the water is just crazy funky. Huh. You know, so to see that water cleaned is just magnificent. It's, it's amazing. Wow. Um, to see cities where you saw animals, you know, the cities that were locked down, and you saw animals walking around, and some animals that people hadn't even seen in a long time. It was just incredible. Where do they come from? You know? Yeah. So the, the, she, she, meaning Mother Earth, mm-hmm regenerates herself um, and and showed us this. If we let her, she will. Social justice I'm really happy about because it has a really poignant uh, message um, that we really need to pay attention to, especially now, right. um, because Definitely. there's so much injustice, so much corruption, so much negativity. Um, so there's that. You know, there's the message with this song. But as well, I also love what we did with that musically, because what my goal was, was to do a song that had a rap on top of it, but that was not a typical backbeat track, Hmm. you know, and it's not a typical two and four backbeat track, but there's a very strong pulse and, you know, Matt Garrison, Carlos and myself, we're we're going for it. You know, we're not, (laughs) we're we're not just holding somebody's hand. We're we're, we're really going for it. So, you know, another thing that I want to share with people is that, um, there are many ways to to uh, play things, you know, and you don't have to just typically um, hold just a backbeat or hold, you know, uh, this this beat for people to feel the pulse and be able to move to it and groove to it and somebody to be able to rap on it. 
you know, you can juxtapose the, the participation in that. You mm-hmm. can juxtapose that, you know, and pass the ball around to different members of, of the band. Um, and that's what we did on this, you know. So I'm really happy uh, for that track for, for several reasons. And, you know, mainly the message and then the, the, the musical concept. See, I think that's wonderful. And, and you wrote all these songs way before the pandemic ever came along, which I think is just incredible. <laughs> Because again, very timely, just great messages. And 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 one thing I, I guess I did want to ask is, you know, you're no, you're known, you're well known for for pushing the envelope for your music. I just want, where did you get that quality from? Was it there at the beginning, or is that something you're kind of uh, developed over time? Because I, I love that quality. Oh, thank you so much. Sure. Um, you know, it comes from, I think, a drive that that I have naturally, but it's really spurred and inspired and pushed and birthed by what I saw in my heroes, you know, what I saw in Art Blakey. And, you know, what I saw in Elvin Jones, what I saw in Miles Davis, what I saw in Tony Williams, what I saw of Charlie Parker, never saw him live, but obviously what I saw in the drive that he had, Coltrane, you know, um, the people who I was able to actually see uh, and meet, you know, mm-hmm. um, had this incredible focus, you know, yeah. and this incredible drive to push the music. Um, those are, are, are my absolute favorite musicians, the ones that have no fear. You know, Wayne Shorter has no fear in music. Herbie Hancock has no fear in music. Yeah. I love that. You know, they just go for it. Um, and they're very serious musicians. Ron Carter, you know, you never see Ron slouching when he's holding his bass. You know, the <laughs> moment he picks up his bass, it's game on. You know, Elvin sits down at the kit, and I've seen him hobble to the, the drum kit with a sprained ankle. When he got to that kit, it was game on. Sprained what? Forget <laughs> about it. Tony Williams, you know, he sat at that drum kit, and just when he was walking up to the drum kit, you knew game was on. That man was focused and ready to hit, you know. So to me, that's, that's the attitude uh, that I wanted to adopt. And, and the very first time that I saw that attitude was in person was seeing Tony Williams do a drum clinic. And I was about 15. Oh, wow. I think I just turned 15. And I saw him in his drum clinic um, and when he walked up to the drum kit, I knew that something incredible was getting ready to happen. Huh. He sat down, he picked up the sticks, and just him and a bass player played, and it was one of the most incredible musical moments that I've experienced to date. Wow. It was just amazing. And it really blew my mind because his technical prowess, obviously, was unparalleled and just, you know, supersonic, just out of this world. His tone, um, incredible his attack on the drums, his sensitivity to the drums, his concept just so otherworldly and so advanced that I knew from that moment, and that was probably the pivotal point for me, I knew from that moment that I either had to be on that path of excellence Mm -hmm. or I should do something else. (laughs) (laughs) I should just stay at home and read books or, you know, become a chef or do something else you know, become a doctor or, or some other field, you know. Um, but that was my choice to follow that path. Oh, well, it's an amazing path. And you have just, I love how you say no fear. I, I just think that's wonderful. And that's what's, I think, you know, propelled your career and an inspiration to so many others that are out there. Now, I know you, you just came out with this album, but, you know, what, what's next for you? What's coming up? Next is, is the actual release of, of the record, you know, um, this record, uh, we've released four tracks already mm-hmm. <clears throat> thus far, and the full release is coming up. And so I'm really excited about just birthing this this child, you know, this, nice. this baby that, that we've all put so much love into. And I say we all because I really welcomed the energy, the thoughts and, and opinions, the interjections of all the people who were involved. So... You know, I think we've all parented uh, this record, so to speak, and I'm really just so thrilled (laughs) that it's getting ready to come out. And after that, you know, we are all um, in the throes of 
the backlash of, of this pandemic, pandemic, whatever it is. Right. But we have to wait this thing out because <clears throat> nobody's touring right now. So right. as soon as we're able to get back in the throes of that, you know, we, we will be back on the road and playing. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. In the meantime, until that happens, I'm constantly writing music and constantly hearing ideas. So I'll be putting together uh, more music uh, for the next project. Oh, that's so exciting to hear. Cindy, again, I want to congratulate you on this awesome new album. And I just want to say, you know, we're uh, just our thoughts are with uh, you and Carlos as we weather through this wonderful little pandemic. But again, I just want to thank you so much for just taking time out of your schedule to join us today. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Much appreciated. Online Coffee Break. Wow, I really enjoyed my conversation with Cindy, and I'm loving the album, Give the Drummer Some. Again, it's available in full on September 18th, so make sure you get that wherever you get your music. I want to thank Cindy for joining me today. I want to thank you for joining us as well. Again, we'd appreciate it if you'd share this episode with a friend. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you can give us a thumbs up, we'd appreciate that. Or if you're listening, just give us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast application. We'd certainly appreciate it. At any rate, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless.